Hello, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and I'm here today to defend my position on why it would be a bad idea, I believe, to put the uh, reactors into a sarcophagus of sorts to um, uh, cover them up, to entomb them, that sort of thing. Alright, first off I'd like to thank everybody who replied to my video, whether they agreed with me or not. Differences of opinion are perfectly acceptable and wonderful things. Except I would not like to thank those people that said that I was dumb, insane, idiot, or crazy just because I did not agree with them. That That is sort of uncalled for, and, you know, whatever. I'll let people like that... Well, anyway, the point is, uh, if you had a difference of opinion with me and you argued out your point, good for you. That's what you should do. That's called debate, and it's a good idea. Here's my opinion of what should happen. Remember what I said? I am not a physicist. I, well, I mean, I guess you could call me an amateur physicist, but if by physicist you mean PhD in physics or something like that, no, I am not. I am a computer scientist. I do hope to get my master's degree in physics, but I don't have one right now, so I can't call myself a physicist, and I won't. So just understand that, too. Take it with a grain of salt if you like. All right, here's your basic reactor. Now, this is incredibly simply drawn with, like, a Sharpie Okay, I wanted to do this at work, but I am not allowed to have a video camera where I work. So, can't do that. Can't use the phone. Here's your basic reactor. This does not look like the inside of the Fukushima Daiichi reactor, well, the plant's reactors. They're differently designed. But, I mean, the same basic design, just this won't look exactly right. You, I'm just kind of giving you a basic idea here. Water goes in, fills this thing up right here, and it boils. And the steam comes out here to be cooled and circulate it again. The steam turns turbines. Okay, you got that. Now, sorry for the crudeness, I do do 3D animations as you guys have probably seen in a couple of my videos, but they take a lot of time and I rarely have a lot of time. I have, I'm working on a bunch of really big projects right this moment and I don't have any time. Here are fuel rods. They're actually probably, the fuel is probably not in pellet form, it's probably in little cylinder form, but whatever, close enough. Here are little fuel rods with the uranium fuel. Here's another one. And stuck in the middle is a control rod, which in this case uh, is going to be absorbing neutrons. If you pull this out, then these guys can exchange neutrons back and forth. There would actually be lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of fuel rods and lots and lots and lots of control rods of various types. There are even, even other kinds of exotic rods you could have in there, like reflector rods, uh, tampers, all sorts of crazy things. But anyway, here's your basic one. You stick this thing in the middle, and there's not enough neutrons bouncing around because it's cut in half here and these guys will slow down. You pull it out and they start speeding up and going into a fissile reaction again. Okay, so once you cut this thing off you need to let it cool because the radioactive uh, decay products that are in here, a lot of them are going to decay really fast putting off radiation which becomes heat while, when it's inside here. If you don't cool them off with the water then they will turn into a liquid at the bottom of the pressure housing. Now that's fine as long as the pressure housing stays intact. If it cracks open anywhere, then it, the, the molten radioactive material will leak out and potentially form a critical, uh, well, it would be a sub or potentially a critical mass. Okay, here's the reactor. This is closer to what the real thing looks like. You have the ground right here, and then you have the air, and here's the top, that blew off, remember? Here's what blew off. Inside here is the concrete housing that, for the reactor, and here is your reactor, and below here is something called a suppression tank, where water sits. Water for, that's been pressurized into steam can be dumped into this, this big donut-shaped thing full of cool water to cool down and then c uh, condense. And one of the reactors, this is actually cracked open, squirting out radioactive water. And that kind of thing will seep into the groundwater. Okay, notice the ground is right here. Okay. Here's our destroyed one, see? Oops. See? Good one? Destroyed one. Same basic thing. There's the um, suppression chamber again. Here's the reactor vessel. Well, that's technically the reactor vessel. This is kind of like the outer vessel, but whatever. And then this right here is the top piece. As you can see, it is blown off. And here's a little worker per person. And there's a, uh, not unhappy, but somewhat relatively okay face. Radiation is escaping through uh, the steam that's coming out and then 
radiation is also escaping into the groundwater and gra into the ground itself, probably through cracked suppression chamber or even cracked um, pipes. All right, here's where we are right now. So why don't we entomb it? We just dump all this dirt and material over top of this and then eventually make a nice concrete dome. Sounds like a great idea, right? I don't know. Here's the problem. Once you've entombed it, yeah, okay, fine, that's biased, but whatever. Once you entomb it, here's the worker. The worker can't get to this anymore. I mean, they can, but they have to go through tunnels and stuff to get, it's really complex to, uh, uh, exercise to get in this anymore. Currently, workers can still go in. They have to be careful only for short times, but they can go in and come back out to work on it. Here they cannot. This is all dirt and material. It's piled over top and eventually concrete goes over. Any cracks or holes that exist in this dirt and the steam will probably find its way out. So you've somewhat limited this radiation from getting out, but that does not 100% limit it from getting out. At Chernobyl, for example, it did not limit it from getting out, although it did very much help. Of course, the difference is with Chernobyl was a giant burning raging fire. It had gotten to the point where there's no such thing as preserving the core. Currently, we have four cores that are mostly intact. There are probably cracks in the containment vessels. Anyway, the radiation coming out from the bottom is still going to go into the groundwater because this does absolutely nothing to stop this. Nothing. So people that keep saying, oh, well, we need to entomb it because of all the radiation that's in the ground. Yeah, that'll continue to seep into the ground. Now, if you entomb it, you can't put more cold water in this anymore because it's covered up. If you can't put cold water on it, then if you recall, this thing right here will melt. The part in the inside will melt down into a blob here, and if there is a hole, like people keep telling me, they keep saying entomb it because there's a hole. If there is one and, and you entomb it and then the water can't get in, it will melt down all the way. Not a little bit of a melt, not a partial melt like we have now. All the way down, blip, into a big glob of stuff, and it will melt out like it did at Chernobyl. This actually did happen there. And then it will, for sure, go down into here. And then if there's any holes anywhere, as people keep telling me there are, because they keep saying entomb it, there are holes. Well, if they're right and they entomb it, then it, the, the melted material comes out the bottom. I mean, that's sort of obvious when you look at the design of it. The idea of entombing it to cover up the radiation that's inside of it seems like a good idea if you go at it with a, just a basic understanding. You've got this reactor, you cover it up, and then radiation can't get out. But the problem isn't radiation shooting out from here. That's mostly not happening. Like just blasts of radiation. This thing is designed to stop that anyway, okay? The problem is the escape of radiation from here, which will be mostly prevented when you entomb it, but not all the way, and then from down here, which will in no way be prevented if you entomb it. In fact, it'll be worse from down here because you can't then cool the thing off. Now, people keep saying, well, why don't we pump water on it? What possible good is pumping water on this stupid thing going to do? I'm putting all this water on it, well, the reason is, is because these decay products are reducing. They go down they, in exponentially like a curve. They, well, actually, more like, like this. They, 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 they decay with respect to time. When you cut one of these things off normally, they're really, really, really dangerous and highly radioactive, and you pump water through a perfectly working one for weeks, months even, before it's ready to have the top popped off and the fuel rods taken out. Okay? Fukushima Daiichi um, reactors 5 and 6 are in this current state. They're intact. And they're cooling, and they will remain that way for weeks, maybe months, and then they'll eventually open the top and pull the rods out, and that's it, done. These guys, when they pull the tops off in a couple weeks, if they haven't entombed them, they can cut off the damaged parts and remove the rods, and then slowly remove the reactor pieces like they did at Three Mile Island, and eventually clean the place up. If you entomb it, you cannot do that. And if you entomb it, then the exclusion zone will never be able to be shrunk. It will probably have to be in, in, uh, expanded. And as for all the iodine in the water, most of that iodine will be gone in about 50 or 60 days. It has an eight-day half-life. Does this make any sense to people now? I mean, I understand the feeling, the fear, the need to do something, and this seems like a good idea, but it really isn't. I mean, if you look closely, you see that it's not. I mean, I hope you see it's not, and if you differ with my opinion, which I'm sure there will be plenty of people who do, explain why you don't think that that's a good idea. Or rather, why you, you think that this is a good idea, because I don't think it's a good idea. And if you do explain it, please try to do so without calling me an idiot. It is sort of annoying after a while. I mean, I don't think that I'm an idiot here. I feel like I can have some idea how this works. But, you know, say this doesn't work, or this will work because of this, this, or this, okay? Let me know what you think. And uh, there you go. This has been Tom. 
from anti-proton.com, and thank you for the thousands of views. Bye-bye.